Welcome to Inspired by Faith, the program of the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. This is a show to help you be inspired by your Catholic faith, live out the gospel message, and deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm Michelle Fanley, and I'm joined each program in the studio with my dear friend, Emily Jaminette. We hope this show provides an uplifting 30 minutes to help refresh your soul and strengthen your faith. As it was born out of our friendship, we hope it encourages you to deepen and develop spiritual friendships with your sisters in Christ. Well, hello, Emily. How are you? I'm doing so great, Michelle. The The leaves are changing. The seasons are rapidly moving forward. And I'm, I'm just excited. Yeah, and it's a beautiful day today. And we are really honored and blessed to continue our podcast season here with our guests for our 2022 Catholic Women's Conference. So our theme for our t- February 19th, 2022 conference is 2 Timothy 1 through 6. Rekindle the gift of God that is within you. And today we are very blessed and honored to have Father Dave Pavanka with us on the show. You know, Father Dave's very near and dear to us because he was actually our director of student life when we were both at Franciscan University of Steubenville. I have um, two children there as well. We're both graduates. All of our families have attended. And Father Dave um, just kindly endorsed our book, Prayfully, which came out a few years ago. And, and I'm just so grateful for all that he does in serving the kingdom. And I cannot wait for him to share his message with the women at the conference. They are going to love it. So Father Dave is the president of Franciscan University of Steubenville. He has served for more than 30 years as a spiritual director, retreat leader, and formation director, and also served as the director of Franciscan Pathways. His well, he is a well-known author, conference speaker, and pilgrimage leader. He co-creator of the video series, The Wild Goose, about living the life in the Holy Spirit, as well as metanoia. So welcome, Father Dave. It's my pleasure to be with you. But that can't be right. It can't be 30 years. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not that old. So I don't know who did your guys' background work, but there is no, no way. way I've been doing this stuff for 30 years. I don't know. We graduated. I'm only graduated in, what, 1998? Eight? Yeah, I'm right, a, and I was seven when you guys were here. So I I, I have a kid in Austria, and it, and it was twenty five <laughs> years ago that I was in Austria. So I've been really reflecting on Father Dave. Time goes really fast. It goes yeah, fast. Bless God, bless God. But it's so it's it's just wonderful to be with you. I look forward to being with you and your sisters in February. But it's always a blessing to be with you guys. Yes, we are so honored to have you. And I was just wondering if you can share a little bit with our listeners who aren't familiar with you, a little bit about yourself and your and your background. Sure. Uh, yeah. So as you guys mentioned, I'm Father Dave Pavanka. I am a Franciscan priest, and I belong to the Third Order Regular of St. Francis. It uh, Francis started, for those who don't know, I won't go too, pe- too deep in the woods, but uh, Francis started three communities. We like to say it took him three times to get it right. And uh, I am a member of the Third Order Regular, and we run our uh, community is the sponsoring institution of Franciscan University. Uh, Franciscan University has been a part of my life since I was a 21-year-old kid, and it's just been such an important part of my life and my formation. Uh, they jokingly said when they made me president here that I've had every other job, so it was the only one that I hadn't done, so they might as well make me president. But uh, it's just a blessing to be back at, at Franciscan University. And, yeah, I'm from out west in Colorado, uh, four brothers and a sister, mom and dad. I love I love my life. Uh, the thought about being a priest was always in the back of my mind, and I just can't imagine my life not being a priest of Jesus. So it's a great blessing. That's How's beautiful. That background? That's great. And, you know, Perfect. right now we are in the midst of Vocation Awareness Week. And mm-hmm. so whenever you hear this, you know, vocations are so important. You know, just touch uh, briefly. How did you hear, you know, God calling you to the priesthood? Yeah, well, it's it's great. My mom and dad have been married for 63, 62 years, and uh, they prayed every day of their married life that one of their kids would have a religious priestly vocation. So I joked that me and my brothers, there were five of us, we got together and we pulled straws to figure out who was going to get this. But honestly, the the thought was always in the back of my mind. There was never a time that that the thought about maybe the Lord was inviting me to be a priest wasn't there. You know, I would say the latter years of high school, first year of college, he was still trying to figure that out. You know, the Scripture says the Lord longs to fulfill the deepest desires of our heart. John Vianney says the Lord delights in doing the will of those who love him. So I just had to be able to kind of take some time and come before the Lord and say, okay, what is that deepest desire of my heart? Uh, I took a year, I was going to college uh, in Colorado, took a year off and spent with a, a wonderful ministry called the National Evangelization, the NET Teams. 
And that was really an opportunity for me to get away from school, from family, from my hometown, and say, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And it was really there that it became more clear to me that the Lord was inviting me to be a priest, transferred to Franciscan University, uh, finished my education here, and just uh, really sense that this is what God wanted me to do. I, I thought a little bit about a diocesan priest, but I always sensed that if I was going to be a priest, that the Lord was calling me to be a religious, uh, being in relationship with brothers, having brothers to support and encourage to live with, was just, I, I sensed that that was always what the Lord was asking me to do. I feel like we're kind of brother-in-laws. We are, we are. Yeah, my, my brother Joe <laughs> is also a Franciscan T.O. War in Father Day's Order, so I have a lot of amazing priests now in my family, too. So it's such That's a right. blessing. That would make you my sister-in-law, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, right. Totally. Nice. I look forward to the Christmas gift. Okay. <laughs> I will, it will be there with bells on. I always send you a Christmas card. I already know that. Yeah, you do. You do. And Emily, you've got a brother who's a priest, so you're, you're, you're made in there already. So. Yes, and, okay. and alumni. So I'm glad you brought that up, Michelle. I, I meant to say that um, early on. Just what a blessing it is to be part of the family of faith together. And I think that the conference... You know, it's, you know, sometimes when things are taken away, like last year, we didn't gather in person, but this year it's a huge opportunity to come together and to pray and to laugh and to worship and to learn. And Father, you know, you get to be our our spiritual father that day for a lot, a lot of women. I totally look forward to it. But let me just jump back one, because you started that sentence that we're going to come together and we're going to gather. And then you went into all the beautiful things that are going to take place. So. You know, I've been, we had conferences on campus at Franciscan University this summer, and I've just been doing other events. There's a grace just in that gathering, and, and, and sometimes we miss that, but Scripture reminds us when two or three people gather together in His name. So my experience has been there's just an anointing just being together, to looking across and seeing other men and women together. So I look forward to all of the things you mentioned, but there's such a grace in us just gathering together as a people. So it'll be wonderful. And I love you recently wrote an article in Franciscan Way magazine about the power of the youth conferences. And I think you've seen in your work over 30 years, the power of these conferences. (laughs) (laughs) But really, I mean, I think we all know that there is a gift to be given to women who come to this, this conference. So, you know, share a little bit, tell women why they should come, why come in person. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're absolutely right that um, in some ways, it started with me on net, and they jokingly call it net uh, parachute ministry. You come in, you do your thing, and you leave. But people's lives are affected like that. If we pay attention to the scriptures, um, there are some relationships that Jesus had that were ongoing, you know, with the disciples, with those close followers. But many of them were encounters that took place in an afternoon, right? And it changed their life, and it transformed their understanding of who God is and who Jesus was. So that's why it's such a blessing to come together, get out of your normal routine, get out of what you you might do on a Saturday or Friday evening, Saturday morning, uh, and present yourself and, and be open to the possibility of encountering the Lord. And, and the thing that I think is beautiful about gathering is, Okay, I, the Lord's going to be there. He's going to be present. He's going to be present in the speakers, and that's a great blessing. But he's going to be present in the community gathered. That's one of the things I've just been more convicted of is that there is a, there is a grace, there is an anointing when the body of Christ comes together and is together in person. And to be able to be a part of that, that in itself is transformative. And all the other things that you mentioned, the talks, uh, adoration, all of that, that is just such a blessing and grace to be able to do that with one another. So, yeah. If I've learned anything over the last 18 months, uh, Zoom provides some opportunities for the dissemination of information. But to come together as a community, to be in person, to be the body of Christ again, it's just so important that we that we take advantage of that. Well, you know, as we're talking about the conference, um, Michelle, we're with, you know, Father Dave Pavanka. It, is there, you know, an, an understanding of maybe what you feel called to share, um, you know, or a sense of, you know, how to better live out, you know, to Timothy Six, this idea of rekindling the gifts that God is within you. Is there any words of encouragement to help the women kind of connect with with why come? What 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 to anticipate? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is the word rekindle. If if you're rekindling, that means that there was an initial kindle, right? So rekindle. So I think that 
in inviting those who are going to be a part of the week or part of the day to understand that. What does it mean that, that we are graced? What does it mean that God dwells in us? That, that, that text says, rekindle the grace um, when hands were placed upon you. You know, each one of us were baptized. And at that baptism, there was a baptism, and there was an anointing, and there was a grace given. Uh, Aquinas would say that, that that grace can be given, but the power that comes forth from it can be dormant. And, and he goes through a long list of, of what, might, what might cause that uh, grace to be dormant. But the opportunity, as uh, we're hearing Paul saying to Timothy, to rekindle that, to stir that into a flame, that's just a great opportunity. To, and, and I can't, <laughs> I mean, I, I realize that not everybody in the world can be there, but why would you miss that opportunity? Why would you miss an opportunity to have the grace and the blessing and the anointing that was given to us in, in, in baptism to be rekindled? And that's really what the, what the day is going to be about, is recognizing the grace that's been given. Recognize what does it look like and what does it mean that God dwells in us? And then what are the ramifications of the, such a reality? And, and really being able to unpack that and release that grace and that power is really what I see the, the morning and the day uh, is going to be about. Or at least that's how I'm going to approach it. That's awesome. Now, not to take away in case you might tell this story later, but Emily and I Uh-oh. love your, <laughs> the penny story from Spiritual okay. Freedom. I actually was rereading the book. It's one of your, I think, one of my favorite reads of yours. Oh, wonderful. And you shared the story about a young woman who had really this beautiful encounter with you about God's love. And I feel like so many women, I, in fact, I had one time during our conference, a woman scribbled a little note and sent it to one of our one of our volunteers and says, I'm not worthy to be here. So do you mind just giving a brief synopsis of that penny story? Because it's awesome. Yeah, well, it was. A, thank you. It was a really beautiful encounter. It was one of my students at Francis University. And and just through through a whole circumstances, she lost her mother. She ended up just making some pretty bad choices. And, and I would speak to her about the Lord loving her. And one of the first times she goes, you don't know what I've done. You tell me you don't know what I've done, and and I would say this to anybody: you're right, but uh, it doesn't matter that that what we've done doesn't stop the Lord from loving us. So I just talk about her value and her worth and her beauty and her goodness, um, because that's how God has created her. Well, one of the times she was just fiddling with a penny and just kind of not making eye contact and fiddling with this penny. Come back into my office the next day, and there was something underneath my door, and, and she made this illusion. She said that that people are like pennies. You know, some are nice and shiny and pretty, and then some are pretty black, and they've been through a lot, and they've been beaten up and dropped in the, you know, in the gutter. And she said, you know, Father David, I just want to thank you that, that I'm that penny that was, was dirty, but you, you reached down, you picked me up, you told me about a God who loved me. And then she shares that I'm beginning to believe that that might be true. Um, our value and our worth is what it is. No matter what we might think, or no matter what it looks like on the outside, the reality is, is God gives us our worth. It's not the world that gives it to us. It's not our job. It's not our relationships. It's not our family. It's given to us by God. And we need to be able to claim that. Amen. And people, they don't have to wait to hear your message because you have some amazing video series online. Can you share with our listeners where they can find that and about those? Sure. The The first series I did that you alluded to is called uh, The Wild Goose. And people give me a hard time because they don't understand what the, the wild goose means. But the wild goose was the term that the ancient Celts used for the Holy Spirit. And there's something about that that I really love and think is beautiful. It's this, this wildness to, to the Lord. I, I recall that early on in uh, Pope Francis's pontificate, he talked about um, not caging the Holy Spirit. And, and he said, we have a tendency to cage the Holy Spirit. And, and he said, it is not ours to tame the Holy Spirit. So that, that, that image of the wildness of God really resonated in my heart. So it's a 14-part series. Uh, it can be found on the wildgoosesloose.com. We also, there's a Wild Goose app if you want to download that app, you get that. And then Metanoia was a follow-up series that we did focusing on relationship with Christ and who He is in our life. So, and then there's other materials that I've, I've got that, that we've got out there. But I think, honestly, that they're beautiful. They're filmed beautifully. Uh, I like to think that the content is beautiful as well. So I've been really, really edified by how those uh, series have impacted people's lives. Absolutely. I hear stories a lot of time. In fact, I had put a picture, I think, of us, I mean, you had taken at Franciscan University on my Facebook, and my f- best friend from fourth grade reached out, and she's like, you know, Father Dave, I'm watching oh, The so Wild fun. Goose, and I love it. So it was oh, so, so cool fun. to see, you know, so someone fun. I've kind of disconnected with really connected over our, your work. Oh, we have, I have one more question. I wanted you to give a plug for the Franciscan University. You know, Emily and I's brothers, who are priests, both went to Franciscan University. It is such a beautiful seed of 
vocations and and just an amazing place. I know I can can say I'm Catholic today and the Catholic I am today because of Franciscan University. So if people have kids who are of college age, um, tell them a little bit about Franciscan. Well, first off, thank you for just uh, allowing me to just spend a word or two about it. I, I, maybe just start with the statistic that I think is is uh, should yeah, should should wake us up, and that is there was a study done of young people that graduate from high school that are involved in their faith. These are not kids that are not involved in their faith, but involved in their faith going to church. Studies show by the time they're 25 years old, so six six years later, uh, only about 25 percent of those kids are still going to go to church. Um, that's that's startling, and and we have to ask the question: you know, what's going on in those years, those formative years from 18 to 25, that so many people are leaving leaving the church? And I think that that's what Franciscan University recognizes: is that it's such a vital time of formation and evangelization, and coming to a personal relationship with the Lord. That it's not because your mom and dad are making you, but you're making decisions that are going to impact you for the rest of your life. So. We at Franciscan University feel a couple things, that, that Christ needs to be at the center of, of the institution, center of the university, that faith and reason are not uh, in conflict with one another, that, that one engages the Lord through the intellect and one engages the Lord through the heart, and both of those things come together, I think, in, a Catholic, in an authentic Catholic university. Uh, Father Michael Scanlon, who was the president a uh, number of years ago, one of the things that he said is that while many Catholic universities were trying to separate themselves with the magisterium and, and the official teachings of the Church, uh, Franciscan University is going to embrace that, that, that ultimately we can't separate ourselves. Uh, I, I recall one of the quotes from actually a previous president, even before Father Mike, he says, anybody, any Catholic institution that wants to div- divorce itself and separate itself from the Church, from the hierarchy of the Church, doesn't deserve to be called Catholic. And, and that we believe that, that we believe, as John Paul said, the Catholic University is at the heart of the Church, and we celebrate that. So uh, we've got about 2,500 students that are able to attend Francis University, I don't know, 40-some-odd majors. I, and, and really what I see is that we've got young men and women who are coming here, they're being formed. A friend, St. Francis was kneeling in front of a, what's called the San Damiano Cross, and he heard the Lord say, rebuild my church. And that's what we're about. We're about graduating young men and women who are going to go and participate in the rebuilding of the church, doing that with, through the culture and the church. And uh, I'm, I'm just excited. I, we've, we've got some really wonderful things that are going on here, and the fact that the Lord lets me to be a part of it is humbling and exciting. And I welcome anybody, any of your listeners, to just stop by and visit us, and I think you'll be... Uh, pretty inspired by what's taking place here at the university. Well, and as a current parent of two of those students, I want to personally thank you for your involvement. If you follow Father Dave, you can see he's very involved with the students, and so are the other friars. And I have one over in Austria right now. And oh, just there, just saw him. I, I heard. I hopefully you saw the redhead uh, that, that that is spending time over there. But his experience is unbelievable, Father Dave, to walk the footsteps of Blessed Pier Giorgio, to right. go to Poland, to go to Rome, to go to Assisi. To, I mean, these kids are having an experience that um, of a uh, lifetime. Yeah, of a lifetime. And Michelle and I will both say that's a, a time in our life we we never cherish. Yeah. yeah, never forget. Yeah, amazing. Well, I need you to pray that my son makes that choice to attend Franciscan. <laughs> you know, he's thinking about staying home and going to Ohio State like his dad. So I, <laughs> I'm working on him to go to FUS, man. All right. All right. Well, we'll do, I'll do my part. Yes. Well, we, I also was reminded to, to talk about your podcast with Bob Bryce, They That Hope. Can you tell us a little quick about that before we... Well, it's interesting. I think it's uh, like the two of you. Bob and I have been friends for 24, 25 years. And people would say, they would just listen to us sometime, and they'd say, you guys just need to record this. So we, we did it, <laughs> excuse me, in the middle of when COVID was kind of rearing its head, that we, at a time we think that the people needed some hope, right? Everything was stressful and anxious. And so it's just us uh, sharing and helping people discover hope in their daily life, in, in culture, in their family life, uh, we, we focus a little bit every now and then on sports because we both like sports, but where do we find hope in the world today? And just for, for 30 minutes a week, if we're able to open up and allow people to feel and experience the Lord's love and presence in their life and walk away from the greater sense of hope, that's what we're about. 
Amen. Well, we thank you so much for joining us. Will you give us a blessing before you go? Sure. May Almighty God just pour out His Holy Spirit, His love, and His peace, and His presence on all those who are listening to this podcast. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks so much. We'll see you in February. God bless you guys. and Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Woo, awesome. Well, you are listening to Inspired by Faith, the program of the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. I'm Michelle Fanley, and I'm in the studio with Emily Jaminette. And today we just spoke with Father Dave Pavanka about the 2022 Columbus Catholic Women's Conference, Rekindle the Gift of God Within You. You know, authentic. That's the word that comes to my mind. He is truly an authentic man of God. And so why come to the Women's Conference? To just experience, to hear Father Dave. Yes, just I to mean, experience that level of preaching and pouring out with really um, just the prophetic gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's it's awesome. I am so excited, too, for the Holy Hour, because I know we both went, I think it was two Octobers ago, to Franciscan University, and Father Dave was leading the Holy Hour, and it was one of the most powerful experiences of my entire life. It was so amazing, and the healing that took place and before the Eucharist, before the Blessed Sacrament. I mean, I remember just standing next to father dave and he had the monstrance and it was the heat you could feel the heat and the the graces pouring out from him so it was it was beautiful you know and i think people need to understand that these speakers like father dave they're really busy people like we waited for like three years yeah we've been on the wait list yeah what what he is doing every single day and to give us this time and really pour into us is is truly a gift we are you know he's he's giving the gift of self And um, I'm just very, very excited that he's said yes. And so, you know, mark this on your calendar. Don't just, you know, oh, yeah, that sounds good. No, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. If you need to book an airplane, get a hotel room, you know, make sure that you have that car that weekend, drive in, whatever it is, like, come. Yeah, mark it off on your calendar that this is your day, your day of retreat, your day of conference, your day of prayer. Put it on the calendar and let everyone else know, like, I'm not available this day, right? We're not going to have sports. We're not going to have, we're not going to travel. We are going to, I'm going to spend this special day at the Catholic Women's Conference, February 19th, 2022. Or if you got a young family, you know, uh, hire the driver to get the kids to the basketball, if there's basketball or swimming, because sometimes we need to be creative on how to go about you know, helping our family, helping our, you know, with our careers. But as Michelle said, carving out, you literally have to carve out the time. And the first place to start is with your calendar. Absolutely. And so you can get more information about the conference at ColumbusCatholicWomen.com. So you can hear about all our speakers, but we will share a little bit about them here today because we are so excited for the amazing lineup we have this beautiful day we are planning we are praying our our whole leadership team has been meeting every month we all went to mass together last month we met with our spiritual director father garland and we are praying for you that you are to come and to be blessed. But we're really excited. We're going to have Sister Tracy Dugas. Uh, Sister Tracy is a daughter of St. Paul. She's young and she is on fire. There are the media nuns, they call themselves. And Sister uh, is down in New Orleans. So she has a fabulous New Orleans accent. And she just really is on fire for her faith and her love for the Lord. So I think you will all really, really enjoy hearing Sister Tracy. Well, and Lex, next is Lisa Brickemeyer, and she's the founder of Walking with Purpose. Lisa was raised as an evangelical Protestant and can entered into the church in 1991. She developed the curriculum um, and led Bible studies throughout Europe, Mexico, and the United States for women and children. She holds a BA in psychology. So I think Lisa, she's got, she's a spitfire. Is that a good way to say yeah, it? Yeah. And I think so many women are doing Walking with Purpose yeah. in their parishes. So they're familiar with Lisa, with her message. And it's a great way to, if you've got a Walking with Purpose, group to come together to do this, to join us together and um, to hear this beautiful message. And I know people really love hearing from Lisa. We'll also be hearing from Janelle Foligno, who is the wife of former Columbus Blue Jackets Captain Nick Foligno, who has go- undergone some really difficult trials in her life with her children and their children's health. And she is going to share her witness and how, it, you know, to be a Catholic when your life is in the limelight. And I think that's really inspiring for me to see people whose life is, you know, open book. Everyone sees what you do to, to be able to be a faithful Catholic. And that's really a beautiful gift. It is beautiful. And our music will be by Tori Harris. She's an accomplished songwriter and she's really remained commitment to her core values, her Catholic faith 
And I think that we'll just be so entertained by her music and by, you know, the, just the, her openness to the Holy Spirit. Her first book is Holy Spirit 101. And then we have Sister Anna Gonzalez will be our MC. And if you want to hear more about Sister Anna, we interviewed her here on Inspired by Faith. So check that out in the St. Gabriel archives. You know, it's conference season. So we, we are all about talking about the conference, helping women to understand what they're going to expect. If you have questions for us, let us know. We'd love to address the questions on the podcast. Answer, you know, visit our website. Let us know, you know, how we can serve you in these months leading up to the conference. And some of you, you might be binge watching the week before, and we sure hope you do. Yeah. And check out Father Days. I definitely recommend the Wild Goose series. It's amazing. Amazing. And his metanoia one is great, too. I mean, if you are looking at some ways to prepare your heart, especially this Advent, um, be sure to and check out his book. Spiritual Freedom um, is a beautiful, beautiful read. And the, the penny story Father shared is in that book. So you can read it. Um, a really great look at prayer in your interior life. So I would highly, highly recommend Spiritual Freedom. Well, what a the time goes fast, Michelle. The time goes fast. It does. And I think that, you know, as Father Day, we were very blessed before we started. He opened us in prayer. He gave us a special blessing at the end. But, you know, I was wondering if we want to close with the Hail Mary to really just ask the Blessed Mother to wrap her mantle all around us. Father, Son, mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed Mother, we ask you to intercede on your, our behalf. Please inspire the women of our diocese to come to gather together to hear God's word to be inspired in their faith and to bring this message back to their parishes. We ask you to come before the throne of God and place these intercessions before them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We thank you so much for joining us on Inspired by Faith. We hope you were blessed and inspired by this episode. And we want to remind you, if you want to learn more about the Catholic Women's Conference, visit us at ColumbusCatholicWomen.com. And you can hear more about Emily and my work if you visit our website, InspireTheFaith.com. Thank you and God bless.